Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to present you two signature schemes named Ride and Mira. Since they are very similar uh, between them, I will make a, a unique presentation. But I will take the opportunity to present, uh, in fact, the MPC in the paradigm, since it's the first talk about this paradigm and it's an important uh, part of uh, the new call. So I will take time to explain. It will be a generic presentation and then I will make uh, the explain what is specific to Ride and Mira. So first, yeah. Well, so to start, a quick introduction. To, uh, to build signature schemes, so it's well known, but these two approaches, the first approach is the hash and sign paradigm, where the signer has a trapdoor to invert a one-way function, and you will use it to build the signature of the message. And the verifier ju just need to use the one-way function in the other sense to, to verify. So it produces short signature, but since there is trapdoor in the public key, it's often lead to large uh, public key. We can take the example of UOV or the first session. The, the second approach is uh, using a zero knowledge proof of knowledge. In this case, we are working on an interactive protocol between the prover and the verifier, and the prover want to convince the verifier that he knows the private key. And there is standard techniques to transform an interactive protocol like it into a signature scheme. This name is the fiat Chamir transformation. This approach leads to larger signatures than the previous uh, approach, but has the advantage to be quite conserva more conservative since there is no trapdoor and it leads to very short public key. In the case of the MPC in the paradigm, we are working on the second approach. In fact, the MPC in the paradigm is a generic framework to build such a zero knowledge proof. A quick uh, presentation f to be more formal, a zero knowledge proof of knowledge. We have a prover we, which want to convince a verifier that he know a pre-image X of some value Y by a one way function F. If we first, uh, there will be interaction. The first message is often called commitment. Uh, then there is some challenges from the verifier and there is the responses. Such an interactive protocol need to verify three property. The completeness, if the prover is honest, meaning that if he knows such a pre-image X, at the end of the interactive protocol, the verifier must be convinced. The soundness, uh, if the prover is malicious, meaning that it does not know such a pre-image, the verifier must be not convinced at the end, or it will be convinced only with very small probability, which negligible probability. Last property, very important, the zero knowledge property. At the end of the interactive protocol, the verifier learned nothing about the secret itself. So the MPCD MPC in the paradigm has been introduced in this article of stock in 2007. So as I said, it's, uh, it proposed a generic method to transform an MPC protocol into a zero knowledge proof of knowledge. And it can be applied to any cryptographic one way function. During a long time, it has been considered as a theoretical result. But since uh, 2016, there is more and more research, and now we can build practical uh, schemes. We can cite the first MPC in the based signature schemes, which, is, which was a picnic, which has been submitted in the first call of the NIST. In this, in this new call of the NIST, uh, there is uh, among the 40 submissions, there is eight based on the MPC in the paradigm. And in this talk, I will make a focus on Mira and Ride. Here is the roadmap to build uh, signature schemes using the MPC in the paradigm. First, we need to choose a one-way function. Are we working on a AES, so say on the AES-based one-way function, on the MQ system like the previous session, a syndrome decoding problem? Then we will build a MPC protocol, a multi-party computation, which take as input a sharing of the pre-image X 
And, to, and this MPC protocol, all the parties involved in, the, in this MPC protocol, we jointly verify that uh, the shared value is a real solution of the problem. Then we will use the MPC in Z paradigm to transform it in a zero knowledge proof of knowledge. Finally, thanks to the Fiat Chamber transformation, we get our signature schemes. So in the first part, I will explain this transformation, how we get this MPC in Z transformation, which is generic. So I will present in the case of Ride and Mira in this talk, but it will be useful for the other talk uh, the, uh, in this, uh, on that. First, we need to discuss which MPC protocol we'll consider in our case. So an uh, MPC protocol is a multi-party computation where we have multi several parties which take as input a shared of a sharing of X. A sharing of X is when we split, uh, we, when we take X1, X2, Xn, so that the sum is equal to X, it's a sharing of X. Each party takes uh, such a share as input. Um, and the idea is they will make computation and exchange between them. And at the end, they will say, accept if the shared value is a one, the solution of the one-way function and reject to the rise. We will consider n minus one private protocol, meaning that if someone sees the computation of all the parties involved, all the parties except one in the MPC protocol, then he will get no information about the secret itself. We are working on the semi-honest model, meaning that we suppose that all the parties follow the step of the protocol, which is a weak notion of security in MPC, but in this case, we don't need more. Instead of considering peer-to-peer -peer communication, we will consider broadcast communication. It leads to more efficient schemes. So the idea is the, the parties take as input a sharing of X, we'll make some computation of it, and we'll compute a sharing of alpha, and then all the parties will broadcast their shares of alpha, and they can publicly reconstruct alpha and continue the computation. Is, um, the idea is we will use such a MPC protocol in a black box manner to build our zero knowledge proof of knowledge. How it works. So first we have our prover, our honest prover. He knows the spray image X and we, it will generate a sharing of X. It will, and it will commit each shares independently. Then, it will run the MPC protocol in his head, meaning it will emulate the computation of all the parties and simulate the exchanges between them in his head. It is why this paradigm is named MPC in the head, because the prover runs the computation in his head. At the end of this uh, emulation, it will send, uh, he will send all the broadcasted value, all the value which has been broadcasted in the computation to the verifier. Then the verifier will choose a random I star. Um, and the idea is that the prover will reveal the computation of all the party except party I star. And in practice, what does it mean? It means that uh, the prover reveals the, the input shares of all the revealed parties, the shares of X. The first remark that we can say is this interactive protocol is zero knowledge. Why? Because the verifiers see all the computation except for one party. But since we have this property of n minus one private, it's exactly this case. We know that if we see all the computation except for one party, we get no information about the secret X. What about the soundness? Why it's sound? Let's think about a malicious prover. A malicious prover will generate a sharing of X, but X, it doesn't know the pre-image. 
So X will not be a preimage of the one-way function, the white, the right preimage. It will make the commitment, and it will emulate, as previously, the MPC protocol. But if you run the MPC protocol honestly for all the party, the output of the MPC protocol will be rejection, because the shared value is not a preimage of the, the right preimage. So you need to cheat on the computation of at least one parties. But in that case, if it cheat, it means that the verifier will detect the cheating as soon as the verifier asks to reveal the corrupted party. And since uh, the verifier will re-emulate all the computation and we see that the, on the party four, uh, the computation has been corrupted. It's not consistent with the broadcasted value. So it will detect the cheating. The only case where the verifier do does not detect the cheating is when the verifier has to reveal all the view except the view of the corrupted party. But what is, the what is this probability? It is when I star is chosen randomly, it is one other, the number of party, one other n. To sum up this transformation, we get the zero knowledge property thanks because uh, we manipulate uh, MPC protocol, which is n minus one private. The soundness, the probability that a malicious prover convinces uh, the verifier is the probability that the corrupted party remains secret, uh, remains hidden. And in that case, it is one other the number of parties involved in the MPC computation. One other n is not a negligible probability. So we will need to repeat this protocol many times, uh, two times in parallel, uh, and uh, the, the global soundness error will be one other n, two, two. And we will select two such so that this quantity is very small, two, two minus uh, 128, for example. That is for the MPC, uh, the zero, the transform, the MPC in the transformation. From an MPC protocol, we can build a zero knowledge proof of knowledge. Now, if we try to make signature schemes directly from uh, this transformation, we will have ugly performances. So we will need to make a lot of optimization. So if we try to think about the communication, in the communication, the signature size, it corresponds to the size of, yeah, oops. Uh, of the size uh, of the element sent by the prover. In that case, the prover sent to send n commitment, uh, n broadcasted value, the broadcasted value of all the party, and the input shares of all the party except one. So the, we obtain this formula. And if we try to apply the to practical uh, problem, the, the size will be 30 kilobytes 50 kil kilobytes, so very large signature size. But there is optimization. Let's think about this, transform this uh, zero knowledge proof. The first easy transformation is the following. Instead of sending the commitment digest for all the, um, all the commitment digest to the um, verifier, the prover can Commit, uh, compute them and hash, send a hash of them. At the end, the verifier will simply recompute the hash digest and will check if uh, it's consistent. In fact, uh, the verifier is able to recompute all the commitment except the commitment of uh, uh, the hidden party since it does not uh, know the committed value. So the, the prover will send the commitment at the end to be in order that uh, the verifier is able to recompute this value. And it's the same for the broadcasted value. Uh, the verifier will be able to recompute uh, instead of checking um, uh, the MPC protocol, it will recompute the broadcasted value for all the revealed parties and make hash of, will hash them but it remained, it need to have the broadcasted value of the hidden party and uh, the prover will send it to, to enable the verifier to recompute. Like it, we, 
decrease the communication cost of the two first arrow, but it remains this part. The, we need to reveal all the input shares except from one party. How we can decrease this uh, cost? This optimization has been proposed uh, in a CC, in article of CCS uh, 2018. The, let's, let to record uh, what is a sharing of X. A sharing of X is when we choose X1, X2, Xn so that the sum is equal to X. But in practice, we can choose all those values as random except the last one. Uh, and since it's random value, we can simply uh, generate them thanks to, by expanding uh, uh, a random seed. And sending the seed will be much cheaper than sending the share. Since we need to have the equality, we need to add to the last party an auxiliary value to correct um, the sum to, to have a sum which is equal to x. But since now we need to send n minus one seeds is very expensive. It's still expensive. To improve uh, this communication cost, we can use a seed structure, a, a tree structure. The idea is we will have a root seed. And from the root seed, we will uh, generate two child, two children. And like it, uh, like a Merkle tree, but for the seeds is from the root and from until the leaf. And we obtain all the leaf will be the seed we will use to in our protocol. We want to reveal all the seed except one. It means that in this tree, we need to, we, we can reveal anything except the red path. And so to reveal anything except the world red path, we just need to reveal the sibling path or the red path, like in a Merkle tree. And so the communication cost is not linear in N, but logarithmic in N. If we summarize those, those, com uh, those optimizations, we obtain this new formula, which is uh, kind of the best formula we can we achieve current, uh, with the current state of the art. And so we can achieve size below 10 kilobytes, uh, which is the size of the submission. However, there is still a problem. The prover need to, when I, I explain, need to emulate the MPC protocol in his head. It's the principle of the MPC in the head paradigm. But it's very expensive. You need to make the computation of many parties and many times since we repeat many, many times, two times. So it will be in practice when we implement, it will be often the bottleneck on the run on the computation for the signing and the verification since the verifier need to recompute the computation for all the parties except one. So it will be the expensive for the prover and the verifier. Hopefully, hopefully there is a new optimization called the hypercube technique. He has been presented the, the, uh, this year at Eurocrypt. In the traditional approach, um, in the traditional approach, we are, as I explained, a sharing of X. So R1, R2, Rn is random. We have some auxiliary value to co correct the, the sum to obtain X. In the hypercube technique, we will not have any more and a single sharing, we will have the sharing of X, but using the same auxiliary value X, delta X. It's very important, what I will explain later. So we have many sums, which is equal to X, using the same delta X, but it is uh, totally random. First question, how we can generate such a sharing, correlated sharing? As before, we can generate using a C tree, uh, n value, big N uh, value, R, R1, R2, Rn. And if we are working in dimension two, D equal to two, we can organize them in a rectangle, in a square, and simply make the sum on the rows and the sum on the columns. And we will, like this, we obtain two sharing of the same value since uh, the sum is commutative and 
making the sum on the row and the column give the same value. And so we obtain two different uh, sharing of the same value. And this case is when d equal to zero, 2. If we want more sharing, we just need to, instead of working in the square of a rectangle, working on a cube for dimension 3 in a hypercube for larger dimension. It is why it's named the hypercube technique. We just take the hypercube with the right dimension. We make the sum on all the rows, the columns, the depth, uh, in all the dimension, and we obtain all the value R1, one, 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 R12, one, etc. Is, that is for the explanation how we can obtain such a sharings. Now, how we will use them. Instead of in the traditional approach, we emulate one MPC protocol in this, the big sharing. Here, we will emulate the uh, MPC protocol, but that will be smaller MPC protocol since they will take as input those sharing, those D sharing. What will be the soundness of the, the soundness of each sub protocol is one other the number of parties involved in this sub protocol. So in this case is one n one n two for the second n d for the last etc. And so the global soundness of the protocol will be the product of all, which is one other n since we chose uh, we chose uh, the parameter like it. So we obtain the same soundness error as before. Regarding the signature size, I explained that in the, that is for, it is the signature size of the traditional approach. They, there is a delta x. We need to send delta x once in the traditional approach. But here, uh, we only have one delta x just so we can send it as previously. We don't does not need to send d auxiliary value. We just need to send one since it's the same. X, uh, we send the, the plain broadcasted value. But since the, the d sub protocol makes the same computation on the same plain value x, the, the plain broadcasted value will be the same for all those d MPC protocol. So we just need to send once since it's the same. Regarding the C3, we have the same C3 as before, as I explained. So no more communication cost. It, so the, the signature size will be the same in the traditional approach and the with the hypercube technique. Regarding the emulation cost, because it, that it was a problem of the traditional approach, we need, uh, before we need to emulate n parties. Here, we need to emulate uh, in the first sub protocol n1 parties in the second and two, etc. And, and uh, so it's the, it's the party which take as input the red square. But we can do even better. Instead of uh, emulating the first party of each uh, sub protocol, we can emulate, make the computation of the plane value x and the output of the plane of, of the first party can be deduced uh, by the output on the plane computation and the difference with the output of all the computation since we are working on in additive sharing. And so we obtain this emulation cost instead of n in the previous case. This quantity is minimized when we take d equal to log of n and uh, when in one, n1, one, n2, and d is equal to two, so it's the minimal we can achieve. And in that case, instead of emulating n party emulations, doing n party emulation per repetition, we just need to make one plus log of n party emulation, which is which consists in a big saving in the running times. And thanks. To and that is for the last optimization. This optimization, the goal of this optimization was to decrease, mitigate this bottleneck in emulating all the MPC protocols. Now, I presented the, the MPC in the head paradigm, some, opti some optimization to achieve practical performances. 
I will apply them to, uh, to, build, to build the signature schemes RIDE and MIRA. That is, this is the roadmap I showed previously. I explained this part. Now let's deal with the first part. First, I said we need to choose a one-way function to build the signature schemes. In the case of RIDE, we will consider the syndrome decoding problem in the rank metric, meaning that from a matrix H and a vector Y, we need to find X so that we have the linear relation Y equal to H X, and so that the dimension of the FQ linear subspace generated by the coordinate of the secret is less than some bound R. In the case of Mira, we consider the mean rank problem. It, uh, we just have uh, K plus one matrices, and the, the goal of this problem is just to find a linear combination of those matrix so that the result is, has ro a low rank, a rank smaller than some bound R. And then we need to, uh, we will need to build a MPC protocol for those both cases, for the both cases. Let's take, consider the case of RIDE first. The input of the MPC protocol will be a sharing of X, as I explained previously. And we need to check uh, that uh, the shared value satisfies the linear constraint and the wrong constraint. For the linear constraint, it's easy. All the, the, the linear operation is easy to do in MPC. Each party just needs to apply the matrix H on the shares of X to obtain a new value, and they will broadcast it to everyone, and everyone will be able to, to make the sum of the broadcasted value, and will check if it's equal to H. Simply by linearity, we can write the equation, and we obtain that H of X will be equal to Y, it gives a guarantee uh, th that uh, the shared value uh, satisfies the linear constraint. But the second constraint is more easier to, to verify. We need to deal with nonlinear operation. So the question is how we can efficiently check that uh, X has a wrong weight less than some public bound, uh, some less than some public bound R. So we will use a characterization of uh, this uh, definition. In fact, we can rephrase this constraint in the following. If, we have, if X has a rank weight less than some value R, it means that the coordinate of the secret will be roots of degree Q to R, Q polynomial P. It's a mistake, it must be P here. A, a Q polynomial is just a polynomial uh, for which each monome is associated to the power Q to something. And we, instead of checking this constraint, we will check the second one, which is more easier to verify since uh, Q, uh, the Frobenius endomorphism, the power Q is linear, so it's, it's nice. So in practice, it means that uh, the input of the protocol will be X plus this polynomial P. But it will be shared since it contains secret information, as previously. All the party can locally compute uh, the power of its coordinates, power Q, power Q to 2, power Q to 3, since it's a linear operation, thanks to the, the Frobenius operation. Um, each... Um, then uh, the party will check that uh, the evaluation of, in the polynomial are equal to zero, and it just consists to make uh, to check that the scalar product is equal to zero, and there is standard technique to verify uh, that uh, scalar product is equal to zero. We can use a BN twenty like protocol, MPC protocol. It's quite standard technique, so I will not have time to explain. So, uh, thanks to this last checking, uh, if we check this uh, scalar product, we check the wrong constraint, uh, and so we are finished. It's done for the MPC protocol. We applied the MPC in the paradigm to get a zero knowledge proof of knowledge, 
and we applied the Fiat Chamber transformation to get our signature scheme's name Ride. Just to precise, in the BN20 protocol, the protocol I didn't describe, some somewhere the prover need it it requires randomness from the verifier. So in fact, the zero knowledge proof of knowledge at the end will be a five five round proof of knowledge, not a, f a sigma protocol. It will be a five round protocol. And so we need to take into account the KZ attack when selecting our parameter to the number of repetition. The case of Mira is we have this, we need to check that uh, a linear combination of uh, the matrices give a matrix with a rank smaller than R. Same as before, we will share X. The process of this to, for the idea of the MPC protocol is just to write the linear combination. It will be a matrix E. We will split the matrix E in many columns. Uh, each column, and we will represent each column by a field element uh, on a in the right field extension, uh, and and, uh, and so the rank checking that the rank of E is less than some bound R is equivalent to showing that uh, the dimension of the FQ linear subspace generated by the vector E is some bound is upper bounded by R, and so we can use the same protocol as right. And so we, as previously, we apply the MPC in the paradigm, and we get Fiat Chamier, and we apply Fiat Chamier to obtain Mira. Just a quick uh, presentation of the performances. Uh, I, I will not enter into the details of the parameter since I have no time, but we, you can find all the parameters in the specification. Um, the performance is the following one. We can observe that uh, on Mira, so in the, for the min rank problem, we obtain sm a bit smaller signature size than with Ride, but it's close. We op for each uh, problem, we propose a short instance and a fast instance. The short instance uh, need to have we target to have a shorter signature size and the fast. Uh, to have a fast uh, running times, it's in the name. Um, like pink thanks in the previous call. Another thing to say, Mira has performances which is for the moment uh, uh, bigger, there are larger running times for Mira than for Ride because of the conversion of the matrix, but there is ongoing works to mitigate this uh, work. So we will see in the few months, uh, normally Mira will be in, will be, this cost will be mitigated. Few, uh, the classical advantage and limitation slides, uh, slide. This limitation and advantage will be, will be the same for almost all the signature schemes built from MPC in the paradigm. Limitation is relatively slow, few milliseconds to sign compared to lattice based schemes is slower, but it's, faster than things. There is a greedy use of uh, uh, symmetric cryptography. Why? Since uh, that we need to make a lot of ex randomness expansion, commitment, etc. It produces larger signatures than uh, with the hash and sign paradigm. Be here, between five and seven kilobytes for the first security level. The size increased uh, quadratically in the security level is not a property of our schemes. It's the general property of all the schemes built from the fiat chamber transformation of uh, zero knowledge proof of knowledge with non negligible uh, error. So it will be the, this limitation will be the same for all the MPC in the based schemes. Advantage there is a, it's a, a very conservative uh, security. Why? Because we don't use trapdoor in this paradigm, but in the uh, MPC in the paradigm, we don't need to use structure. So it's there is a raw problem, the plain problem, min rank, min rank with no structure, rank syndrome decoding with no structure. 
all the previous uh, signature schemes in rank metric which has been broken, it was because there was some structure. Here there is no. So the last, uh, there is no structure. So the last attack in this kind of problem was uh, was uh, 20 years ago. And so even in the rank metric, it's very conservative. Small public key, since uh, the public key will be, there is a matrix H, often there is a lot of matrix in the public key. But since they are totally random, they can just be represented as a seed. So it leads to very short public key. So it gives a good trade-off when we consider the sum of the public key and the signature size. And uh, there is a lot of parameter of uh, when we build such uh, schemes, so we can uh, adapt. Uh, it's very uh, tunable uh, schemes. Uh, we can, for each context, we can find the better, the best perform, the best parameter sets. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>